everyone, it's me, Anthony Coach, a guitarist on YouTube. I've been teaching guitar for a long time, and over those years I get asked about one thing more than all others. This thing, speed, getting fast on guitar. And today I want to talk about an exercise that I tell people about all the time. It's what I call the speed builder exercise. Warning. It's not very musical sounding, but it's often the case with exercises on guitar that we have to take them away from the world of music and get in the instrument to sing nice melody and make it very mechanical, especially when we're talking about speed in the same way of all those crazy fast players that we all love. We have to take it out of the world of music, make it very mechanical. But before I get into the actual exercise of it, I want to remind you of the Couch Potatoes Guitar Community over on Facebook. The link's in the description. We all just chat about guitar stuff. We would love to see you there. So when people talk to me about speed, the first thing that I talk to them about is subdivisions. Uh, and thinking about subdividing a metronome tick or a drum beat into twos and threes and fours. And speed follows on from that, because that's the foundation. Thinking about how many notes are you fitting into a beat. Anyway, that's a different video for a different day. Because I'm talking about the actual stuff that you play on the guitar and how we can make this as a, a, a practical exercise just on the guitar. Because the second thing that I get guitarists to do is to temporarily forget those scale patterns that they've been doing. Things like the major scale and how it looks like this. Some of those have got two, uh, two notes on a string, some have got three notes on a string and change in favour of the three note per string version of the scale. With those extra notes on top. The reason is because as guitarists we love to alternate pick or to do the legato thing and it's easier to get those up to speed. Yeah, so we can do nice legato. Or, or we can pick those. But there's a lot of music theory there that you have to think about. Well, not a lot, but you have to think about the patterns to keep it diatonic. The major one is a really nice one because of all that symmetry. But let's look closer. We've got um, three patterns that occur that I'm going to talk about a lot today that occur in all of the three note per string shapes of the major scale, which covers the minor scale and the modes as well. So this is why it's a one size fits all speed builder exercise. Not very musical, but stay with me on this one because it does work. We're just going to, I'm on fret five today, going to play fing, uh, finger one, then three, and then four. And I'm going to refer to that one as finger one, three, four. I'm just going to call it one, three, four. And we're going to go one, three, four. Then the same on the next string, one, three, four. Then one, three, four, one, three, four. One, three, four, one, three, four. You're free to do any picking or no picking, in the case of legato, that you want. You can do economy picking, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. You can do my favorite, alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up. Or you can simply do uh, legato, where you just do one pick. That is one, three, four. And then what goes up must certainly come down. And you practice that. You could do the full thing. Or you can break it up into tiny chunks. Uh, yeah. Or even, or just little, the possibilities are almost endless. You can string skip, doesn't matter what the exercise is, the speed building part of it is in building up that finger dexterity. A lot of people talk about finger strength on guitar. That's okay for bar chords, but we're talking about dexterity here. You've got one, three, four. What about 
one, two, four. That'd look and sound like this. <laughs> not musical, it sounds horrible, uh, but, you know, it's not a scale or anything, but it's not meant to be. You're separating out that one specific instance in all those three and per string modes in, in, in which you use fingers one, two, and four. So you've got one, two, and four. You can break it up into little chunks again. You can do it all alternate picking. You can do it backwards. Backwards with legato. Entirely up to you, as long as you only use fingers one, two, and four across all the strings. The next one I like to call the stretch, because you're going to play a note, miss a fret, play the next one, then miss that one, and play the next one. starts to sound a little bit like the whole tone scale, but it's not quite. Again, break it up into little bits. Do it upwards and downwards with picking, with legato. It doesn't have to be super fast, or well, it has to be clean. I almost said it doesn't have to be clean, of course it has to be super clean. Why do I call this one the speed builder exercise? Because it makes you versatile to play all those three note per string patterns. Uh, Lydian is made up of stretch. One, two, four. One, two, four. Phrygian is one, two, uh, two, yeah, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, stretch. Then stretch, stretch. I'm calling those by the modal names, because these are all just positions of a major or a minor scale, however you look at it. But when you see those really super fast, frightening runs by your guitar playing heroes, most of the time they're doing the three note per string thing. It's tough to juggle the theory and the memorising of all that stuff as well. So what I'm getting at here is that you simply take the mechanics of speed. <laughs> And do it. You know, there you, if you just did that one, that's six times the practice than if you just did a position where that was just played once, if you get what I mean. So you get six times the practice for one, three, four licks or runs. Then you do the same with one, two, four, and the stretch. And here is a bonus exercise that you can move these up and down the neck. It starts to sound quite cool and actually a bit usable if you're into the chromatic, I don't care what key I'm in style of soloing. That's one, three, four taken up the neck. Uh, Don't want to do it downwards, it's too hard. <laughs> I've fallen into that trap that we all do in only practicing things ascending. Mmm, requires work. Stretch, taking up the strings. With legato, why not? Oh. And backwards legato that I've not practiced either. Do you know what? This is a perfect example. I'm doing this on purpose. This is a perfect example of of something that you might come across. That that it, in, in taking the mechanic, uh, taking the music out of it and making it mechanical, 
it highlights to you stuff that you've neglected. And I'm getting a massive wake-up call here on descending stuff. <laughs> Gotta do it. Why? So then I'm more versatile for that solo that I'll play tomorrow or the next day. You see where I'm going with it? One, two, four, one, three, four, and the stretch will see you through a lot. Even when you go on to the harmonic minor stuff, which has got bigger stretches and uh, more unique finger patterns, all you're gonna have to do is just go, oh, it's the same, but I have to stretch a bit higher. You know, do the... <laughs> So that's just one, two, four with a bit of a stretch. But by that point, if you've got really confident with one, two, four, one, three, four on the stretch, you won't have to think about it too much. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you do this as an exercise. I love it. It really works. I still practice it to this day and I still need to, as you heard there, on those descending runs. Extra special thanks goes to these incredible names who support me on Patreon. That's very nice of them. It helps to keep the channel going. Uh, you are free to do so if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, anyway, I am and forever will be Anthony Coach, a guitarist on YouTube, and I'm going to do some mindless chromatic shred using finger pattern 134 uh, up the neck because I want to. See you in the next video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.